Welcome to the future of asynchronous coding. This is going to be about await and async. Now, these things, await and async, are built on the top of promises. So if you have no idea what promises are, then I guess you might not be ready for the tutorial. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description for the promises video. And that should be, I guess, enough for you getting started with promises. Now, async await in JavaScript, in ES6 rather, is kind of cool because it makes your asynchronous code look and behave like synchronous coding. And then finally, you can make use of all that try catch error blocking system as well, just like you would do in promises, but with the catch and you know the reject methods. So let's just take a quick look at what difference async and await brings us to us so let's just say you have a function which is async function which performs a bunch of asynchronous operations so let's just say we get let image is the get image we first of all get the image then let's just say um we kind of process it image process the image process is process image and the problem here is that you cannot pass an image. What you have to do is something like image dot then and then value and then do something like process image or maybe just like that. And then and then and then all that stuff. That is kind of OK, but async await when you can use make use of that, it simplifies your hell lot of life. It makes it look a lot like synchronous and uh, easier to read and handle so you could literally do something like this even if image is synchronous how well you can make javascript wait for this promise this promise right here which this function would return for the actual value so we're going to say await and get image so let's just quickly create this function function get image and we can just return a new promise right here which would either resolve or reject and we can just create a latency of a second and we can just say resolve done all right so what happens now is that javascript would actually block the code until it gets a value from this resolve well what well if javascript does that nonetheless it would just block the full script obviously because javascript is running on a single thread well that won't happen and the reason that won't happen is that we would write async with this and whenever you make use of await you have to write async with that function and that being said you cannot make use of await inside global scope right here you cannot do something like this just under your window right that won't work so to make use of await you need an async function and the reason you need an async function is because javascript would kind of act like um, waiting for all the asynchronous operations turn by turn instead of its regular asynchronous behavior of callbacks or like kind of like promises then right so now when we get to this line right here the moment we get to this line right here our image already do has a value of this done right so it would literally the javascript would literally wait a second for on this line and uh, again with async what happens is that all this thing all this values inside it is internally wrapped in the promise so when you call async function you automatically get access to this then right because this returns a promise even though you do not have any kind of like return promise or return anything or resolve or reject anything right there so what we can do is uh, we can create another function which is process image and we can get this image string which in this case would be done and uh, we can pretty much just return another promise which just appends the image string with again right so yeah and then finally what we can do is 
just like a regular function we can return the process and this would appear as the then data right here because again this returns as a promise and whatever you return right here is returned as a resolved value whatever you throw in this function is returned as a catch or as an error value right here inside the promise so if we take a look in the browser now and if we reload this hit the console we would see that process image is not defined i guess we have some sort of typo there and reload this again so you can see that we get done again only now the reason for that is we are just console logging it right here so we can console log the stuff here as well and we should be good to go and we can just console log done here so if we hit reload now you can see that we get done after a second then another second passes by we get done again and then finally inside this function right here we get done again so you can see how your asynchronous function looks like both of these are asynchronous or actually um, I guess we are missing the await keyword here this should be await right and the reason why it was working without await as well is that process was eventually a promise and uh, you are actually returning a promise from async function only so it doesn't matter right because again you're gonna wait for that so that time this returned us a promise but this time it would be just a value so if we console log console log sending and process this process would be a value now so if we reload this you can see we get done done again we're gonna send done again and not a promise and then we finally get done again so yeah that's pretty much it about async and await and it's kind of a lot easy to use as compared to callbacks and in a lot of case promises as well obviously because it makes your code look like synchronous and it's kind of extremely easy to manage as well so it makes it extremely easy if you are kind of want to do asynchronous tasks in a specific order right you do not want to just fire them all at once so in that situation it can come handy and uh, yeah in all sort of tasks you can make use of async and await one thing about this is that you cannot directly make use of async await for callbacks and the reason for that is that await expects a promise in front of it right so you can see that we are returning a promise here we are returning a promise here and then only we are making use of this await so if you want if you have a function which kind of is a callback accepts a callback then you might want to create another function wrap it inside a promise and then inside its callback you can resolve that promise and then make use of await so yeah that's how pretty much you would get started with it and that's all for this one and if you liked it then please don't forget to subscribe and if you want to support content like this then there's a patreon link in the description you might want to check that out that would really help so again thank you for watching and i'll see you then in some other video